Hi, uh, my name is Sunil Narang. I'm a PhD candidate at USC, uh, University of Southern California, and I'm, a, I'm my advisor is Professor Antonio Ortega. Uh, I'm working on designing wavelet transform on graph. So my research problem is that how to design critically sampled wavelet filter banks for graphs, such as they are analogous to the regular uh, filter banks on the regular signals, such as images. And uh, the, the problem uh, that arises is the modern massive data sets. They are no longer uniform, or they don't have uh, simple interactions. So uh, the wavelets can be useful in that case. Uh, in fact, the data exchanges in some scenarios are expensive because there are bandwidth, latency, and energy issues. So we choose wavelets because wavelets are a popular tool in many signal processing applications. Uh, they are used in signal analysis, compression, and storage. And by extending them to graph, we would like to do the same for the graph-based data sets. Uh, this is how we proceed for, from images to graphs. We first treat images as four connected graphs. So in this case, for example, NWSC neighbors are connected together. And then we ask the question that can we extend them to irregular grid with missing samples? And if we can, then can we extend them to completely arbitrary graphs? So the applications uh, for our work is the distributed transform under transport cost constraints. So for example, sensors in a wireless sensor networks hold some data, and we would like to analyze them using wavelets. Then analyzing data sets defines on graphs. So for example, online social networks. And also, we would like to filter standard signals in arbitrary directions, so not just horizontal and vertical, but in other directions. So a common theme in all these applications is that how to filter and the samples when the samples have arbitrary location and connectivity. So that's what define our work. These are some of the state of the art. Um, the, so just to give you an overview of our system, uh, we, we first act on a bipartite representation of a graph. A graph in our case looks something like this. The nodes are the data sources, and they are connected, uh, where the connections represent some sort of interaction, similarity, or differences. Uh, so if the graph, in our case, is of this form, that means it can be decomposed into uh, set L and H, such that all the links are from node L to H. Then we apply downsampling, upsampling operations on these graphs, which are by we only keep the samples corresponding. Downsampling means we only keep the sample corresponding to H, and upsampling means we only keep uh, we we uh, we replace the samples at L by a zero. So that's downsampling, upsampling operations. And what we prove for bipartite graph is a spectral folding theorem, which is analogous to the frequency folding theorem that occurs by when we downsample the regular signal by two. Uh, so using that theorem, we implement these two-channel wavelet filter banks on the graph. Uh, the filter banks look similar to the standard two-channel filter bank, except that the downsampling, upsampling operations are now replaced by downsampling, upsampling on bipartite graphs. And we see that the equivalent transform can be algebraically represented as this. And if we apply spectral folding theorem, then we can apply the condition of uh, aliasing cancellation and perfect uh, reconstruction in very, very simple terms. In fact, we go ahead and propose graph QMF filter bank, which are exactly analogous to the quadrature mirror filter banks found for the 1D signal. For non bipartite graph, which cannot be represented as this, we propose a bipartite subgraph decomposition in which we iteratively decompose the graphs into bipartite graphs. So, one coloring scheme, for example, here, where we assign two coloring on the graph and remove the, all the edges corresponding to those two coloring, and then in the subsequent graph, we choose a new coloring and we decompose it. So this is one example of bipartite subgraph decomposition for a non-bipartite graph. Some of the experiments that uh, show, demonstrate the application of our work is that we can add extra orientation in an image. For example, instead of considering them as just four connected uh, pixels, uh, we can connect them as eight connected pixels. It turns out that this graph can be decomposed using our proposed decomposition as a rectangular graph and a diamond graph, both of which are bipartite. And one is rectangular connection only, and one is a diagonal connection. These are the results of the wavelet decomposition using our proposed transform and the transform using standard separable CDF97 filters. And we see that our proposed transform capture, um, they are energy-wise, they are much more compact than the standard CDF filter, which still have some energy in these bands. In fact, when we see the reconstructor, reconstruction, with, with the proposed uh, filter bank and the CDF97, the images are crisper. This is another example of Minnesota traffic graph, which is com okay. This is another example of Minnesota traffic graph, which is completely arbitrary. We can decompose it into two bipartite graph, and then we apply a graph QMF filter bank on each bipartite graph. This is the signal we are analyzing, which is which has a sharp discontinuity. These are the wavelet coefficients, and we see in the wavelet coefficient the low pass channel is an approximation of the original signal. 
while the wavelet coefficients they are high at the point of discontinuity same thing can be observed for the reconstructed signal from each channel that they are uh, approximate LL channels and approximation and the remaining signal are like wavelet coefficient that means they are high at the point of discontinuity so that kind of summarizes my work uh, we are defining down sampling up sampling operation on graphs and using those we are defining critically sampled filter banks on these uh, gr uh, graphs and our ongoing work is to uh, find the best bipartite graph to decompose for a non-bipartite graph.